I've been telling people there is no such thing as safe tap water, period. Peter, welcome to the program. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Gundry. I'm happy to be here. What's the problem with tap water? Come on. The, the city tells me that my tap water is perfectly fine. It's regulated and what comes out of the tap is, is good for me. Well, Dr. Gundry, since uh, 2015, since our company, Ideal Living, introduced AquaTrue, the first and only multi-stage countertop water purifier, multi-stage reverse osmosis, I've been telling people there is no such thing as safe tap water, period. Now, this is the exact opposite of what you're going to hear from the federal government, the EPA, or your municipal water supply. But recently, even the EPA had to admit that 50 to 75 percent of all the tap water coming right out of our faucets contain these chemicals, these forever chemicals known as PFAS. So if that isn't an admission that there's no such thing as safe tap water, I don't know what there would be. So I know hopefully people who've watched this podcast know about these forever chemicals. It's certainly getting in the news. We know that at the very least, they are endocrine disruptors, and they're primarily estrogen mimetic compounds, and they're responsible for a whole host of mischievous things. So the EPA doesn't care that they're there, or they have no mandate to make sure they're not there? I mean, how does that work? Well, these PFAS, these forever chemicals, we've known about them for quite some time. There was a movie that chronicled in this movie called Dark Waters, an entire community that was contaminated with PFAS. And in this case, it was the outrageous number of people coming down with cancer, yeah. right? So it wasn't just an endocrine disruptor. Also, we're seeing you know, cancer as a result of PFAS. So finally, just now, the EPA has said, look, we've got to get PFAS out of the water. And they've set some standards for this to happen in a timetable, right? So the first part of the timetable is that in three years, all the municipal water supplies, they have to test for PFAS to find out if it's in the water. That's the first phase. Is it in the water or not? That, that's three years. Then following those three years, they have to come up with a plan to remove the PFAS. Then Starting in five years, they have to test again and say, are we removing it or not? But there's no penalties right now for not removing it. The second thing is, is that it's generally felt in the scientific community that there's no safe level of PFAS. There should be no PFAS in your water. And yet these regulations aren't setting the standards at zero. They're setting the standards at commercially reasonable economical ways to remove the PFAS. The other thing, and the last thing I'll say on this, is that they're only regulating five out of thousands of these PFAS type chemicals. And what that means is that as soon as the industry is required to remove these five, they'll just work around it and come out and use one of the other thousand chemicals. And this is the problem is that the government has a mandate to deliver safe water, but they have to do it from their point of view in a commercially reasonable way. And if the local municipal water supplies can't afford the technology, then the government is not gonna mandate them to do something that just economically can't be done. And that's the problem. It's technically possible to remove PFASs from water, yes? Yes, it is. It is technically possible and just as a point of reference, all of the aquatures are independently certified to remove PFAS from the water. And they're one of the few water purifiers that you purchase that are actually certified to do that. And not just for one or two gallons, but for the entire filter life, which is hundreds of gallons, depending on the different models that we sell. Now, the other thing that made the news recently is the Biden administration said they're going to get lead pipes 
gone in what 10 years right what do you think of this effort is that a good thing is or is that just you know makes good publicity well i think it's be a great thing i think we can all agree that lead which is a neurotoxin and has very very serious that creates very serious damage especially in young people yeah. can impact their iq their cognitive function and this this is something you know over a lifetime so you know everybody i think can agree that we need to get the lead pipes uh, removed we have this terrible problem in flint michigan yeah and you know the question is well first of all 10 years is a long time so you know do you or your children or your family or your loved ones do you want them drinking potentially lead in your tap water for the next 10 years is that something that we're really comfortable with and then the other question is this mandate really going to happen right the same infrastructure bill mandated that we were going to have thousands of ev chargers these fast chargers for electric cars and now here we are coming to the end of the Biden administration. I just read yesterday 69 69 charges have been installed under this plan. So we'll see how well we do with removing the lead pipes. Aside from Flint, Michigan, which obviously made a lot of news for good reasons. Yeah. Are lead pipes still a major problem in cities in houses? Oh, absolutely. You know, we have lead pipes in the infrastructure is hundreds of years old in many parts of the country. Unfortunately, you know, the worst cases are in, you know, poorer communities yeah. where there's less money to do the remediation. Those communities tend to be the most uh, severely impacted. And the terrible thing is all these municipal water supplies, they know, you know, like they believe the water is safe when it leaves the supply, right? But they're not tracking really what happens, you know, when it gets to an individual house and the damage is happening in the infrastructure. That's the big problem is it's not being tested at the location where people are actually drinking the water. Now, a lot of people say, well, don't worry, because I have plastic pipes in my house and those are safe, but not so fast. The other big issue that people are finally aware of is microplastics. And microplastics are everywhere. Yeah, they certainly are. So people say, well, okay, I'm, I'm not going to drink municipal water. I'm going to drink bottled water. Right. And now I'll be safe. And Peter, you don't have to worry about my municipal water because all I drink is bottled water. What right. say you? Well, this is microplastic topic is a very, very big and complicated topic. But let's start with the microplastic in bottled water, because at least we're talking about a finite location of where we're looking for the microplastics. Right. So recently at Columbia University, they did some testing of pretty much every brand of bottled water that's sold in plastic, in plastic bottles. And what they found, I think the number was 240,000 parts per billion of nanoplastic and microplastic in the average bottle of bottled water. It's a lot of plastic. And when they try to understand, well, where is this plastic coming from? How is it getting into the water? They really don't know the answer. I mean, there's some speculation when you unscrew the cap, that abrasion to the plastic is dropping microplastic into the water. Another big problem is, and as we've all seen, when you pick up a bottle of uh, bottled water now, most of the major brands like Aquafina, Dasani, or Pure Life, they come from Coke and Pepsi. I think Nestle sold the Pure Life brand. But to save cost, of course, they're saying to save plastic waste, but really they're making these plastic bottles so thin now that when you grab them, you're compressing them. And that 
flexing of the plastic is what breaks down and causes plastic to get into the water also. And there may be some evidence that even in the manufacturing of the plastic bottles, there's some plastic dust that's left in the surface of the plastic. So those are the three potential reasons, the three ways this plastic is getting into bottled water. And unfortunately, these particles are really, really small. So when you drink this water, not only is the water getting into your body, which we need for every cellular function in the body, but this microplastic and these nanoplastic particles, they're also passing through your digestive system, into your blood, and into every cell of your body. And these plastics have been found in pretty strange places. Yeah, there's some pretty scary stuff. I'll bring up one example that I warn my patients about. There's been a study looking at people who've had carotid endarterectomies, which I used to do, where we take out plaque in this main blood vessel that goes up to your brain. And lo and behold, it was discovered that these plaques were full of microplastics wow. in the plaque. The bad news was, this particular study graded whether there weren't very many microplastics versus lots of microplastics. And they correlated the amount of microplastics in this carotid plaque with the amount of stenosis blockages in people's coronary arteries. I see. And the scary thing is, as you might guess, the more microplastics they found in the plaque in the carotid arteries, the more plaques people had in their coronary arteries. Right. Literally a direct correlation. Right. So, you know, people go, oh, you know, microplastic. What? Yeah, okay, wait, so what? You want to talk about men and testicles and sure. things like that? Why not, Dr. Why Gundry? not? I mean, before we get to men and their testicles, I think we can also say that they're finding in the brains of people when they do autopsies. Obviously, we're not looking for plastic in living people's brains. Hopefully. <laughs> but they're seeing significant amount of microplastics now getting into our brains. And of course, that can affect our cognitive function. It can lead to Alzheimer's and other cognitive decline. And the one that we just started this section on of conversation which is they've now found microplastics in all areas of penal tissue, in the male genitals and the testicles. Yes. And the you know, one interesting correlation that they've seen is that there are more higher concentrations in microplastics in men who have erectile dysfunction. And I think this ties into what you were just saying. This is getting into your fine blood vessels and impacting your circulation. And therefore, that's you know, critical for proper erectile function. So that's another area that these microplastics are showing up, that they're just everywhere in the body. So guys, listen, you know, most of the people who purchase our AquaTrue water purifiers are women, but for... Uh, the sake of your sexual well-being and uh, erectile function, it's really important that you guys start filtering your water also with an AquaTrue water purifier. Yeah, and also there looks to be a pretty good correlation between microplastics and these decreasing sperm counts that we're seeing in men. Men's sperm counts have fallen like a third in the last 20 years. Yeah. And again, there's this crazy correlation between microplastics. Yeah, I think we need to dig a little deeper, you know, when we talk about microplastics and what their impact on the body is, you know, like what is plastic? And what happens when plastic starts breaking down inside of your body, right? So plastic is all made of petroleum derivatives. Yep. And there are literally thousands of chemicals that are in plastic to allow them to function in different ways. You know, you have one kind of chemical that's in a plastic wrap and another one that might be in a plastic water bottle. Another thing that, you know, might be in a plastic kitchenware or a cutting board. So there are all types of thousands of chemicals in plastic, 
but the two main ones that we're really concerned about, you know, are these phthalates, which is the the main one. I think we can just focus on that. And phthalates are uniformly in every type of plastic, and the phthalates are well known in the scientific literature to be hormone disruptors. And this is probably why you see hormonal changes and changes in sperm count as this microplastic starts increasingly be found in our bodies. They're literally sending out chemical messages. In fact, in previous books, I've written about studies, uh, both in animals and in humans, that these phthalates particularly in food wrap, one study, the more chicken that a woman ate when she was pregnant, the smaller her little boy's penis was, a direct correlation. And this has actually been shown in animal studies. So we have all this shrink wrap, plastic wrap, which looks wonderful and makes it convenient. But the tighter the plastic is to what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink, the more these chemicals go into that substance. And these are not benign, unfortunately. We had no inkling that these things were going to be a problem. Yeah, so I should just say to the, everybody listening to this podcast, little self-promotion here, that we just recently certified all of our AquaTrue models to remove microplastic throughout the filter lives. So we are taking care of the PFAS, the first thing we really focused on, and we're also taking care of all these microplastics. And in general, I would just like to say that, you know, we can't depend on the government to protect us. And we really have to take steps as individuals proactively to make sure that the We reduce contaminants in the food that we eat, in the air that we breathe, and in the water that we drink. And at my company, Ideal Living, our goal is to positively impact people's health on like a foundational level. And so it's so easy. You know, if you have a really good multi-stage water purifier in your home that takes the guesswork out of contaminants in water, then you know at least, okay, I'm drinking pure water. And similarly, you know, you want to breathe pure air and you want to be careful about the foods that you put into your body. And I think anybody listening to a Dr. Gundry podcast is well aware of the impact of the things that we put into our mouth and ingest. I'm going to add one crazy thing that I learned in the last couple of weeks that you probably saw. Recycled plastic water bottles may be actually the most horrible thing that you can possibly use for water and other products because I didn't think about this, but the print, the ink print that is on the outside of the bottle, even if it's a wrap, is recycled and then mixed in with the next plastic. And those chemicals are now leaching into our water. And this study said, oh my gosh, you want to talk about microplastics, you should think about the print chemicals that are not regulated. These are the troublemakers. So recycling bottles may be incredibly harmful for us. Who knew? Yeah. You know, Dr. Gundry, I think if we were having a conversation about tap water 10 years ago, we would have been talking about a completely different group of chemicals that we're worried about, right? And the, just like the seasons change, the chemicals that we worry about and become aware of as we make new discoveries of the impact of different chemicals that are in our water on our health and well-being, they also change. And if we have this conversation 10 years from now, I guarantee you that no matter what the government does about lead and PFAS, we're going to be talking about different chemicals that have been discovered in tap water. And this is why you really want to take the guesswork out of water and have a level of filtration that whatever is in the water, it's going to get taken out. Things that are known and unknown. Speaking of which, a guest asked me on a podcast what I thought about the 
presence of antibiotics in our <laughs> drinking water and you know what effect does the government require testing of antibiotics in city drinking water yeah this uh, whole area of contaminants which are called emerging contaminants by the testing labs includes all type of prescription drugs that are yeah. just getting into our water system including antibiotics like hormone from uh, birth control there's a surprisingly uh, large amount of uh, psychoactive compounds from depression medicine and we're getting microdoses of all of those things in our drinking water and the government doesn't regulate any of them so that's another area which you can test for and they can be effectively removed by a high quality water purifier like AquaTrue. All right, so that's the problem. Let's talk about solutions. There's lots of water filtration systems out there. You know that, I know that. Can you give us a quick rundown of the different types and how they work, what they're gonna do, what they're not gonna do? Sure, I think why don't we talk about the things that people most commonly have in their homes already. Yeah, okay. So a lot of refrigerators, come with ice machines and water dispensers and in them. And there's a little thingy in there. Yeah, and there's a little filter that goes into your fridge. Many people have a fridge for 10 years. They never replace the filters even one time. The filters actually are supposed to be changed every six months. I know very few people who do that, but these are very small filters. They're small blocks of carbon and with very, very few exceptions, they're not certified to remove anything. And they're really made just to make your water taste better, but not safer. You know, for the people who do replace the filters, most people go on Amazon and they just, you know, buy the least expensive compatible filter that goes into their machine. And those are all about making them as inexpensive as possible. I accidentally bought one and put one, I hadn't replaced my filter because I never use it for drinking water. But my wife had a knee replacement surgery and we were using a lot of ice from the ice machine. So I had to change that filter. And I just bought one off of Amazon, not thinking, put it in, and it produced black ice cubes. Excellent. For the first couple of loads. So <laughs> I don't recommend you depend on a fridge filter to deliver pure water. Second type of filter that many, many people have are inexpensive pitcher filters that just use gravity to move the water through the pitcher. There are different types of technology, but again, these are generally made to just make water taste better but not safer and the filters have very very short filter lives and there's one particular brand of uh, pitcher filters that claim to ha create what they call zero type water and uh, you can put a tds meter in the water and and it will be a very low measurement but it's not removing any of the volatile organic compounds and then these filters are only last maybe 10 15 gallons maximum yeah. but what happens when they get saturated is that they drop all the contaminants right back into the water so instead of delivering purified water you're getting a strong dose of concentrated contaminants so pitcher filters are not a way to make pure, safe drinking water. And these are the two most common ones that people have in their homes. Most people aren't going to be changing their filters as often as the instructions say, right? right that's correct. Because, you know, they cost and, oh, what the heck, it's going to filter and the water seems to drip through it and it'll be fine. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. But it's not fine. No, it's not fine. And, and you know, that's why on AquaTrue countertop water purifiers, you know, we have a light that lights up when it's time to change the filter. It tells you to change the filter and you just go ahead and change the filter. It takes between 30 seconds and one minute to change a filter. But also the filter lives on AquaTrue water purifiers. On this model, there are three filters. There's a pre-carbon filter that removes the chlorine. 
There's the reverse osmosis filter. Reverse osmosis is to remove inorganic compounds. That means lead, fluoride, which we didn't talk about. We should. Which is pretty much in all of our water supplies and extremely dangerous. Even in low doses, it's a neurotoxin just like lead. And then we have this uh, final VOC carbon filter that removes like those PFAS and also the prescription drug residue. So these are the filters. This one in this unit lasts for 300 gallons. This is 1,200 gallons and this is 300 gallons again. So the machine itself will tell you when it's time to change the filters. Some of our other models made for larger homes have double the filter life and we have an under sink model also. This is your newest one, right? Yes, this is the newest AquaTrue. You know, we want to make our products as accessible as possible without taking away from the performance of the product. So we spent probably a year figuring out how do we reduce the cost of this as much as possible, also make it more compact so it can fit into a smaller kitchen. And yes, this is... Uh, quickly become our best-selling water purifier. I gotta tell you that I have, not this model, but your other model in my office in Santa Barbara, and I use it for everything, and I give it to my patients as well. Now, people go, well, come on, all you're gonna do in your office is you're gonna brew coffee, or you're gonna heat water for tea, isn't the heating gonna take care of almost everything I have to worry about? Now, that's a great question, Dr. Gundry. And I think, you know, this comes from a time, this thinking, this explanation that if I boil water, it's gonna be safe. This is helpful in a developing country where the sanitation is not good, where they don't have any chlorine put into the water and where there's actually virus and bacteria and microorganisms that are in the water that can cause very, very serious illnesses. You know, in India, more than half the patients in the hospital are in the hospital from drinking contaminated water. Yeah. And so boiling water is helpful for people like that. For us in America, it's probably the worst thing you can do if you're thinking about purifying your water because we generally don't have biological contaminants in our water. And when you boil the water, you're just concentrating the PFAS. You're concentrating the lead. All these contaminants, they're actually becoming more concentrated in the water when you boil it. So it's not helping or doing anything to make your water safer. Gundry MD actually supports a wonderful organization called Charity Water. And my wife and I personally support it. And we drill wells yeah. in third world countries because you're right. Literally half of the admissions to hospitals are from contaminated water. And we've seen how these women, for instance, in Ethiopia or Maui, have to walk two to three hours to get water out of a stream where cattle are defecating. Yes. And it's just, I mean, it's heartbreaking. Yes. So you're right, that boiling water, that's what that helps with, but not for what we're gonna do. Yeah, you know, I just briefly mentioned, and I saw your eyes light up, that, you know, talking briefly about fluoride. Yeah, let's talk about that. Bring it up, go ahead. One thing that the developing countries have over us here in the United States is that they're not intentionally contaminating their water with fluoride. So here in America, in most of the municipal water supplies, you know, fluoride is being added to the water, allegedly, to prevent children from developing cavities. And this has been going on for 50, 60 years in America. Now, shockingly, about a year or two, the EPA suddenly decided that the amount of fluoride that they had allowed to be added to tap water was actually dangerous. And they cut the limit in half. After 50 years, they let this go on and now after 50 years, they've suddenly discovered that we should really cut the limit in half because fluoride is dangerous. And what's the danger of it? It's, as I mentioned earlier, it's very much like lead. It's a neurotoxin. And there's actually scientific proof 
that it's reducing the IQ of our children from yeah. drinking fluoride. And recently, a federal judge sued the EPA and provided to the scientific evidence supporting his belief that there is no safe amount of fluoride that should be in tap water. And it turns out fluoride, it's a metal, it's a inorganic compound. It's very, very difficult to remove from water, but the most effective way to do it is with the reverse osmosis and the Aquatru is certified to remove the fluoride from tap water. Yeah, there's been some very interesting studies looking at dementia, memory, comparing water levels in communities with fluoride versus other populations that have no fluoride. And, you know, correlation does not mean causation, but there's a very high correlation right. between the fluoride and water and memory and dementia. I mean, it's scary. Well, it's scary to me. I mean, I grew up at a time when, the, when I drank tap water and the levels were quite high in the water at that time. I'd like to get a few of those IQ points back, Dr. Gundry, but I can't do that. But you and I can do that, and everybody who is listening can do that for their family and their children to ensure a better future for them as well. So how did you get into this? You guy were drinking tap water with fluoride in it. I mean, what was your motivation? Well, I've always been interested in health and wellness. In my undergraduate degree, I have a degree in human development. I was interested in alternative medicine before it was popular, complementary medicine in my 20s. I took a year off in my early 20s. I studied acupuncture in England before it was legal to practice here. So I've had this interest and I've kept it up. You know, things, circumstances happened in my life where I wound up not becoming a naturopathic doctor. I got into the natural foods industry first. I had a business in that area and I sold that. And then I started inventing and developing different products. And you tend to do things that are close to your heart. And I thought, you know, look, I want to use my skills in communication to market products that impact people's health, like I said earlier, on a foundational level. I'm not a doctor like yourself. And so I tried to work on things that are very authentic, that provide benefits that are not provided by other products on the market. And it's a great way to give back and earn a living at the same time. So it's a, just a personal passion of mine. All right. Now, something that has come up that people have asked me about, even in my office. So that's plastic. Yes, it is. Should I be worried about that plastic? A number of things. First of all, we only use types of plastic that have been proven safe for contact with food and, and water. Hmm. So that's the first thing. Second thing is... Yeah, let's turn it around. Uh, the receptacle on this unit that holds the filtered water, this is made out of, of glass. And the next thing I would say is that all the Aquatru units that we have, we do something called extraction testing. This is another very expensive laboratory test where you run water through the entire machine, then at the laboratory, they let it sit for a few days, and then they test the water to make sure that the machine isn't adding anything to the water. So we're very, very confident at Aquatru that we're not adding any plastic or any microplastic to the water. Now, one thing I would say is that we do recommend once a week that the tank that you put the tap water into, that you clean that with a soft sponge, not a scrubby, and some just a little dish soap to keep that clean. And the one thing that really causes microplastics to get into water is abrasion. So you never want to use abrasion or abrasive things on any type of plastic that you have in your home. And just a tip to everyone, if you have a plastic cutting board in your home, I really recommend you just throw it out. 
and cut on, on wood instead. Because think about it, you're taking a knife and you're smashing it against the plastic and you're literally creating microplastic that's going directly into your food. So that's just small tip that I would recommend in addition to having a good water purifier. Yeah, that's great. I've talked about that and people get, uh, they get upset about it because everybody's got these in their home. Well, you know, they were so, we were told, you know, you can't use wood because the wood's going to have bacteria in it and you're going to get sick from the bacteria. But we're getting sick from the dumb plastic cutting boards because everybody's using them. You're right. Yeah, I would say in general, the, the things that you don't want to do is like, don't store your food in plastic containers, right? You're throwing those plastic containers into your dishwasher. They're getting exposed to detergents and high temperatures and they're deteriorating, right? And don't take anything that's in plastic and put it in a microwave and just have the plastic deteriorate more. So these are just common sense things that everybody should do just to eliminate plastic from food contact. Final question, is it okay to buy spring water in glass bottles as a alternative? Well, I would say if you're going to drink spring water, and I had heard that you're a Pellegrino fan. I am indeed. I also enjoy Pellegrino. I think you want to just make sure that the spring water is in a glass bottle. The other thing I would just mention is, unfortunately, you know, water sources are also not free of microplastics. And we talked about microplastics in our plastic bottles. But what we didn't talk about is that microplastics are also in our municipal water supply coming right out of our tap. And the question is like, well, how's that happening? Where's that coming from? So it turns out now that unfortunately, microplastics and nanoplastics, they're everywhere, including the air that we breathe and the water that we drink. And the reason is, is that the plastic waste that's going into landfills, it just deteriorates over time. And then when it becomes ultrafine particles, the air just, the wind, the air just gets blown into the air, into the air that we breathe, it drops into our water supplies. And so, you know, depending on the water source of bottled water, there could also be plastic waste in even the finest bottled water. And I haven't specifically looked into the Pellegrino brand, but maybe if you drink a lot of it, you should. I've actually been to where it comes out of the ground. So hopefully it's coming right out of the ground. Yeah, if it's coming from an underground underwater, water yeah. source that's probably the absolutely best option and uh so i would feel comfortable saying that's a good choice if you're going to drink bottled water but you're right i happen to know and i won't talk about it there's a major american brand that talks about that it's directly out of springs and in fact it's not and there is a large bottling plant near palm springs that has no identification and there is a large kind of river running out of the mountain to it that's uh, interesting yeah and uh, there's no identification uh, right we all knew when it was being built and it's really good water when it came from the source but it's you're right it's been exposed to to air etc cetera, etc cetera. that's right you know i always like to see you because one of the things i was really going to pick on you about was I have a plastic pitcher, but look at that, it's glass. So I should mention the model that you have, which is the original classic AquaTrue, we still sell it. We're very confident that it does not add any microplastic or nanoplastic to the water. In fact, the clean water tank on that particular model is made out of a plastic called Triton. It's probably the most expensive food contact plastic you can buy. If you have a high-end blender like a Vitamix or an, another yeah. device like Nutribullet, those type of blenders, they're all made out of this Triton plastic and there's a reason for it. It's the most tested plastic to not add any kind of chemicals or 
plastic nanoparticles or microparticles to water. All right. As you you might have remembered, but uh, we get an audience question, and believe it or not, we got one just for you. Okay. All right. Let me have it. All right. This is from Ronan36535. (laughs) Ronan, okay. What's worse, fluoride or microplastics? Because some plastic water bottles contain no fluoride and they use reverse osmosis to clean the water. While most countertop filters won't remove fluoride, they use more advanced filtration than water bottles. Well, is there, you know... Well, I think that's like asking, you know, which is worse for you, arsenic or cyanide? Yeah, there you go. Right. So uh, neither of these things are things that you want to be ingesting. And, you know, we've already talked about these two contaminants. So my recommendation is remove them both from your water and stop worrying about them and just make sure that every glass of water that you drink is free of these contaminants and every other contaminant. Okay, well, thank you. We've covered a lot of new stuff this time around that is in the news and you should be concerned about it. I've spent a lot of time in the last few books trying to warn you about literally everything we talked about today. And The good news is somebody is doing something about it, and we greatly appreciate that you're so interested in doing this. Oh, Dr. Gundy, I should say, you know, we're trying to take pure water and take it to the next level also, and we just introduced enterprise-size AquaTrue water purifiers that have the same exact filtration, the same certification to remove 84 contaminants, but they're large enough to put in a health club, a gym, a yoga studio, a large office. They can service about up to 200 people a day. And again, they're the first and only commercial water purifiers that are laboratory tested to remove 84 contaminants. It's actually was shocking to me that these water purifiers that you see in offices, including some very, very big ones. I saw one as I came into this office. I don't want to mention the brand, but it's actually not certified to remove anything. You're just assuming or acting on faith that it will do something for you. Thanks so much for watching, but don't go anywhere. This next one is sure to surprise you. Number one, find out your water quality in your town. You may be shocked with what you thought was healthy.